So in this last lecture, I want to talk about um, the Mir equation, which builds on what we learned last week. Uh, I also want to talk about refraction, and I want to talk about Snell's law. Um, <clears throat> start off with the Mir equation. What it is, is last time we estimated, we uh, found a way to draw the location of an image, but it, but it was a little bit of a guess, right? It, it wasn't... Um, we didn't know exactly where it was located, how far from the mirror. Uh, we didn't know exactly what its height was. And so this week, we're going to, uh, to talk about an equation we can use, and we'll, we'll use it a few times to, to solve that, you know, where the image is located, uh, what its height is, and so on. So here's the mirror equation right here. Uh, it says uh, 1 over the uh, distance to the object plus 1 over the distance to the image is equal to 1 over the focal length. And uh, something to notice here is that it's all uh, inverted, right? But we can't just flip both sides because of this addition sign. So we have to keep it um, looking like this. Uh, another thing that comes up with this equation is uh, the units. Um, we don't have to stay in meters for this like we do normally. You can, but you don't have to. Um, you just have to make sure your units agree and if they agree, then it's good. So you can stay all in centimeters or all in feet or all in inches, and that'll be fine. So I went ahead and uh, just wrote out here at the bottom. Let's see if I can get this on the camera. <clears throat> just a reminder of what our variables are. Um, these DO and DI just measured uh, from the mirror. Uh, focal length is half the, the radius of curvature. Uh, a virtual image, when we uh, use this equation, um, if we get a negative uh, distance to the image, then we have a, a, a virtual image or an image on the virtual side of the mirror or the back of the mirror, um, an image where the light rays really don't go through. So that side is the negative side, that other side of the mirror. And so because that's the case, when we have a convex mirror, like a Christmas ornament, um, we, uh, we have a negative uh, F value. Uh, but a concave mirror, like most of our examples we drew last time, were, were usually concave, involved a, uh, a focal length on the same side of the mirror as uh, where the object is. And so the distance to the object is positive. And when it's on uh, that side of the, uh, when, it, when it, the distance to the object is always positive and um, being on, on, on that side of the mirror. So uh, its uh, F value is um, positive. All right, I'll show you a little bit more of that in a second when we do an example here. <clears throat> um, we have another equation that we're also going to use that relates the, the height of the image, the height of the object, the distance to the image, and the distance to the object, and we'll call it the magnification equation. I don't know if that's what it's technically called, or if it's just the magnification equation or, or whatever, but, but uh, magnification is this uh, variable m. And, uh, and what we can say then is if, say, the um, height of the image is larger than the height of the object, then this ratio, what m equals, would be uh, greater than one. And if it was, if it was, if these were equal, then it would equal one. And if the height of the image is less, then we know it's smaller or reduced. Um, then this number would be less than one. Um, notice the negative sign here. I think when I uh, <clears throat> just just because it is there for for di over do. So sometimes we'll set this up with just this part using this equation, and sometimes uh, we might want this number m, which is going to tell us this ratio. But a lot of times when I use it here, we'll just, we'll just go ahead and, uh, and, and use the equation like this. <clears throat> All right. A uh, couple other things we can say here is if the height of the image is negative, um, that means that the image is upside down. We know that, we should remember that from last time, that for a lot of our concave um, examples, uh, for all of them except maybe two, we had a, 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 an image that was upside down. 
And, and so when we get a negative HI, um, the, the image is going to be upside down. Uh, so like I said a second ago, uh, if M is greater than 1, the image is larger. Uh, <clears throat> and if M is less than 1, the image is smaller or reduced. And then finally we can say that if M is, is positive, we get an image that's upright and virtual. Whenever, with last time, um, whenever we had a, uh, whenever we had a upright image, it was always virtual, right? Uh, we never had an upright image that was real. And if, if uh, M is negative, the image is inverted and real. Um, and, and, and all of our inverted images were always real. Uh, the light rays really passed through them. And uh, they were, uh, they formed on the same side of the mirror as our object was. And, uh, and there we go. So uh, I'll let you uh, write that down. Uh, hopefully you're taking notes uh, while we're going through this. And um, so what we're going to do is we're going to now use uh, the magnification equation equation and the mirror equation in a couple examples. Um, if I'm going too fast, you know, feel free to pause the video at any points or to, uh, to go back and, um, and, and rewatch parts of it. Uh, I included on Schoology this worksheet right here, which is called the Mathematics of Curved Mirrors. And so I'm going to do a couple examples from here. And uh, I'm going to work through example one and example five down here. <clears throat> so you're free to, uh, to download that off, off Schoology uh, if you like to, uh, to, to see it a little bit better. But uh, I'll, try and, uh, I'll try and make it work if you don't um, download it. Okay, so, uh, so what we have here in the first example, um, let me grab my pen. Okay, uh, it says Bobby places a 4.25 centimeter tall light bulb a distance of 36.2 centimeters from a concave mirror. Uh, if the mirror has a focal length of 19.2 centimeters, then what is the image height and image distance? All right, so just like any other problem, we want to jot down our variables. I'm going to go ahead and do a drawing. Um, it's just uh, <clears throat> going to make things a little bit uh, simpler for me to remember the the different variables and just kind of get an idea of what's happening here. So what we have here is a, uh, a light bulb. All right, some uh, distance away. It looks like uh, the light bulb, now this might not be drawn to scale, but I'm just trying to make it work as best I can says a 4.25 centimeter tall light bulb. So that's going to be the height of our object, right? Or H sub O. All right. And, and this is my principal axis, this, this dotted line here, normal to the, uh, the curved mirror. And it says... Um, a distance of 36.2 centimeters from the concave mirror. So I can go ahead and label that. And that's this distance right here. Uh, the light bulb is my object, so this is going to be D sub O. And I'm just going to go ahead and stay in centimeters. It looks like most everything I have here is in centimeters. And then it finally says a focal length of 19.2. Well, uh, half of uh, half of 36 um, half of, uh, 36 is, uh, 18. So, um, I can go ahead and, uh, say, well, uh, the focal, the, um, <clears throat> uh, or half of this distance to the object is 18. So the focal length is at 19.2. So I'm going to go a little bit beyond half. So maybe about right, right here. And this length right here is going to be f and we said for a um, concave mirror right for a concave mirror like this we said that the focal length is always positive so we're going to go ahead and write that 
centimeters in right there. Hopefully you can see all this. I realize I'm not using a lot of different colors here. And I can change that. Ooh, that green. Uh, okay. And maybe one more color for this. Okay, so um, if we had more time, we could also uh, maybe do the prediction, right? Uh, object outside of um, almost at almost at C, right? In between C and F, uh, and 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 predict where this image is going to be and the height of the image, um, because that's what it says here. If the mirror has a focal length of uh, nineteen point two, then what is the image height? and image distance. So we want to know um, what is HI and uh, what is uh, D sub I, both, right? And so we're going to start here with the, the mirror equation. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down. Um, try and move this up a little bit so it's a little easier to see. <clears throat> move this out of the way. Okay, so 1 over d sub o plus 1 over d sub i is equal to 1 over f. And that was our mirror equation, right? So let's go ahead and put our numbers in. Um, and we don't know d sub i, but we do know f. All right, and uh, we said we'd stay in centimeters. So um, what I'm gonna do here, because I, I have a couple options, uh, is um, I, I could try and find a common denominator, but that would be a little rough with these numbers. So I'm just gonna go ahead and, uh, and divide them out and get a decimal for each of them. I think that'd be just way easier. Um, so one divided by uh, 36.2 is equal to 0 0.02, uh, 0 0.028, we'll say, or I could say 0 0.0276. Uh, I'll go 0 0.028. Um, and uh, the centimeters are, are still going to be on bottom. Um, so I, maybe just to keep things... I'll go ahead and write it right now. Let's say maybe to keep things easier and not worry about that. Um, and then finally, 1 over 19.2, 0 0.052. Go ahead and move this over to the other side. So subtract uh, 0 0.028 from both sides. gives us about 0 0.024. All right, so now um, we can go ahead and cross multiply here. I think uh, that's the easiest way. I was trying to think of a, I guess we could flip, flip both sides and, and that would be fine too. Um, I don't know, I'm gonna cross multiply because I think maybe more people are comfortable with that. So uh, centimeters times one is just centimeters over here. Or if you wanna write one centimeter, you can. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Why not, right? Oops. And uh, 0.024 times di, d sub i. Okay, so now uh, I can just go ahead and divide both sides. I'm going to get d sub i alone by 0 0.024. Notice that the centimeters are exactly where I need them to be, right? On top, where they, where they should be. Because um, we're expecting an answer in centimeters. So 1 divided by 0 0.024 is equal to 41.67, which is a pretty reasonable answer because what that's saying is the distance to our image 
is uh, 41.67 centimeters away. Um, so uh, it's gonna be further away than the object is, right? The object is here, so we're expecting the image to be out here somewhere at 41.67 centimeters away. All right, um, so finally, let's go ahead and get the height of the image, right? We, we said that it's, uh, it, this is going to be, um, well, we didn't do it, but, but if we think about it, when this object is between C and F and um, we're getting an image on the, the real side or, or a real image, right, um, that the image would be inverted. So we're expecting to get a negative value for uh, H sub I here. So let's go ahead and, and solve for that. Uh, we'll use the magnification equation and we'll just use uh, part of it, right? So I'll go ahead and write that. Mm, I need some room here. Um, I'm gonna let me go ahead and draw this. Okay, hopefully that's a little bit better. And we can say H sub I over H sub O is equal to negative D sub I over D sub O. And remember, we want uh, D sub I. So um, we, or I'm sorry, we want uh, H sub I. We know D sub I, we just found that. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and rewrite here. So H sub I over, um, the height of the object, which is 4.25 centimeters, is equal to a negative of our d sub i, which is 41.67. We just found that, so. Okay. And divided by the distance to the object, which is that 36.2 centimeters. Hopefully that's easy to see. I apologize if it's not. Um, all right, so that says 41.67. Notice these centimeters right here can both cancel away, right? And that's all good. Um, so let's go ahead and and uh, look at that. Uh, we can, um, this is a problem here, right? Uh, let's, let's rewrite that real quick. That's gonna have to go to the other side there by multiplying both sides by it. But um, let's do this math here first. So negative 41, whoops, 41.67 divided by 36, this is just not my day, 36.2, and we get negative uh, 1.15. No units here because um, the units canceled up there. So now we can divide or multiply both sides by 4.25. And we're going to get negative um, 4.89. So we can say H sub I is equal to negative 4.89 and the centimeters go with it. So uh, that move once again was multiplying both sides by um, 4.25 centimeters, so just like this, right? Cancel, cancel, multiply that by 4.25 centimeters, and we get our answer here. So it's negative as we predicted, right? Because it's an inverted uh, image. And then also, uh, is, it, is it a realistic answer, right? Is 4.89 realistic for the height of this image? Yeah, it was a 4.25 um, centimeter uh, light bulb is that um, is that uh, mean it's uh, reduced or or larger and we can say well uh, the height of the image is 4.89 compared to uh, 4.25 so it's a larger um, image and so we're saying that we get a a real uh, a, a larger image and one that is um, that is uh, forty one point six centimeters away. So um, we can uh, we can actually uh, check that right because this is uh, if if focal length is nineteen point two, then um, 
then that's going to be uh, what 38.4 is going to be the center. So we're saying that the image is going to be out beyond C, right? Because C would be at double this, which is 38.4. And um, so we're saying that this image is, is out beyond C. And um, so if I was to draw that prediction in, uh, C would be about maybe, let's see, 38.2. So C would be about right here, right? And, and we're predicting that this larger image would be of a light bulb that's upside down is, is out here at 41.67 uh, beyond C. And, um, and we could actually check that with a, a ray diagram. Um, or you could look at your examples from last time. I don't know if I have them here. I was hoping I had a copy of those that I could show you really quick. Mm. Let's see, maybe I do. I'm not sure if these are the exact same ones from last time. I don't think they are. But let's see here. Yeah, this is it right here, case three. So what we just proved was case three, right? That when the object is between C and F, right? This is where the light bulb is about. That the image would be larger, right? And beyond C. And, and that's exactly what we just solved um, with this light bulb being at uh, 41.67 or whatever it is and being larger with its uh, greater negative height uh, because it's inverted. So, uh, so pretty straightforward, hopefully. Um, hopefully the, it makes sense now why we need the math as well to back up our drawings, but hopefully the drawings are starting to make sense in how this, uh, how this works. All right, let's do one more example. Let's go to example uh, five. <clears throat> okay, so the reason I chose five in addition to, um, to example four is because in five, uh, it's it's about a convex um, mirror, um, which is a Christmas tree ornament, right? I think I mentioned that last week. So here it says a Christmas tree ornament with an 8.64 centimeter diameter. All right, so let's try and draw this. Uh, okay, this is not going to be to scale. You know, we said that last time or the last drawing as well. So the diameter is 8.64 centimeters. Well, what would the radius be? Well, that would be half of that. So let me see if I can, um, I guess I could have just drew the principal axis through everything. All right, so uh, the radius would be, um, let me see, I better, I better write that down. That's four point, I think 4.32, yeah. So um, we're saying that this distance right here is 4.32 centimeters. And that's gonna equal R. But we're not really interested in R, right? We're interested in uh, the focal length, or F. So uh, F will be from right here to the, the mirror, right? So this length right here, and F would be half of that, so what's that, 2.16? All right, and um, because it's on this side, right, or for a convex mirror, we said this is gonna be negative. So I better make sure I get that negative sign uh, right there. And make sure you have that uh, on your drawing as well. All right, so we have F with a negative value. Okay, uh, then it says um, determine the image size and image distance, so DI and H sub I, we'll say, um, just like last time, of a four-foot-tall child standing a distance of 2.65 meters away. All right, so this is where it's going to stop being um, to, to scale, right? Because I... <laughs> Uh, that would be pretty crazy if I kept everything to scale here. So we have a child standing um, uh, 2.65 meters away. Oh, the units are, are not uh, nice to us this time. Um, we'll call this uh, 
Mm, distance to the object. Meters, almost wrote centimeters. Lord, all right. Uh, okay, so <laughs> um, 2.65 centimeters in a four foot tall child. And this is gonna be H sub O. And I said I would use try and use colors to help and then I don't. All right, hopefully that's a little easier to see. Okay, um, and, 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 and now we're just gonna apply the equation just like we did before. So um, let's write our mirror equation out. Uh, oh, we gotta get our units the same though before we do. Uh, what units do you use here? Uh, that's a little tricky. Um, I'm not sure if, you know, this in centimeters would be like 265. Uh, I guess centimeters will work. Um, I don't see any reason why they wouldn't. Um, I'm trying to think, uh, what, what is a foot in centimeters? Isn't it like 29 centimeters? Um, God, it's been so long. Um, 2.54 two centimeters per inch. Um, yeah, so okay. So let's, let's give it a try. Let's go for centimeters here. So if we flip this to centimeters right here, this would be 265 centimeters, right? Because 100 centimeters is a meter. And uh, four feet, I'm gonna have to do a conversion because I don't know that. Is it 30.48 centimeters per foot? Uh, I don't know, okay, let's just, let's just solve it. Uh, four feet, um, one foot is equal to 12 inches. Uh, two point, or one inch is 2.54 centimeters. Um, cancel, 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 and uh, hopefully this is easy for you to see. I'm going to get rid of this and bring this up a little bit. Uh, then we can go ahead and, and solve, right? We'll just multiply the top across, multiply the bottom across, and there's nothing on bottom except 1. So uh, 4 times 12 is 48 times 2.54 is equal to 121.92. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna write that right here. Okay, so I think using centimeters, we're gonna be, we're gonna be uh, good to go. All right, so one over D sub O plus one over D sub I is equal to one over F get this problem rolling um, and uh, we'll say 1 over uh, distance to the object is 265 plus um, 1 over the d sub i which we don't know is equal to 1 over negative 2.16 centimeters okay so uh, same thing as before let's flip those into decimals um, one divided by 265 is 0.0038. Keep the centimeters on bottom. Um, if you don't wanna worry about that and just know at the end you're gonna get centimeters, you're gonna be fine. That's probably what most of my students would do. Um, you know, and uh, so that's it's not a big deal. Um, but if you like writing it, then obviously it's, it's fun to do. Uh, one divided by 2.16, negative 2.16, is gonna be negative 0.463. I might go out one more decimal. Negative 0.4629, oh, I guess it's 0.30. Okay, so that's fine. Um, and, and that's uh, and that's um, over centimeters. So I this isn't you know this is obviously much smaller um, than this number. Just something uh, worthwhile to note there. Um, all right, so let's kick this over to the other side. We'll subtract this from both sides. So if this is negative and we add it over here, this number is going to be a larger negative number. So um, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and add on 
plus 0 0.0038 gives me about uh, a larger negative of 0.4668, um, we'll say. Yeah, if I round a little bit there. Um, yeah, that's that's really not that hard to do in my head. I, I, anyways, okay. Um, so, but this is negative. Once again, we could flip both sides here, cross multiply, and I'm gonna go with cross multiplying. So we're gonna end up getting um, one centimeter equals um, negative 0.4668 times d sub i. We'll then uh, divide both sides by um, this negative 0.4668. And we can go ahead and find the right pen or marker. Cancel that, um, and, and so one over this is gonna be our answer. It's gonna be negative uh, 2.14. So d sub i is equal to a negative 2.14 centimeters. All right. So what this is saying then is that, uh, if I can straighten those papers out, is that the image is on the negative side, which we'd expect with a convex mirror. Um, so it's it's going to be uh, an upright virtual, well, it's, it's not necessarily upright, but we know it will be. Um, it's going to be a virtual image because it's negative here, 2.14 centimeters this is going to be on the other side of the mirror. Um, and, uh, and, it, and and furthermore, um, it's uh, not going to be, uh, well, what was it, what was the distance to the object? It was 265 um, centimeters. So uh, this is going to be much closer, being only 2.14 centimeters away. Um, all right. Uh, we also are expecting, if we think about it, with a convex um, mirror, we're expecting this to be a much smaller uh, image. So we'll solve for h sub i next, and we'll see if that's true. So let me go ahead and uh, partition this so I have some room. Okay. And our equation we're going to use... I like this green marker, uh, but it smears sometimes. I think it's one of those metallic markers I bought. All right, uh, so it was um, h sub i over h sub o is equal to negative d sub i over d sub o. So hi ho over negative di do. Uh, I guess is a way you could remember it if you like. Um, all right, so uh, h sub i over h sub o equals negative di over do. Okay, uh, so let's go ahead and plug in some numbers there. And we're solving for h sub i. So we can say that uh, if we're solving for h sub i, h sub i equals uh, h sub i over uh, 121.92 centimeters is equal to uh, negative and here we got to watch that negative sign, right? Because d sub i is already negative, so we're going to have two negatives here, so it's going to end up being positive, which is what we expect, right? We expect to, to have a positive h sub i because um, it is upright, right? And, and, and we said if, it's, if it was a negative h sub i, it would be inverted, but, but when it's a virtual uh, image, it's always going to be upright. Okay, so d sub o is... Uh, Distance the object. Um, oh, did I write the wrong? I think I wrote the wrong thing here. Oh, God. Okay. Uh, d, d sub O is 121. Point. No, I, I know I did it right. Okay. It's 265. Okay. Confusing myself here. 265 centimeters. 
Well, it's hard to see. Okay. Um, so that looks pretty good. So we have a positive on top. So we got to take 2.14 divided by 265. Let's do that first. So um, gives us about uh, 0 0.0081. Units are going to cancel away because centimeters both go away just like that and is equal to H sub I over 121.92 centimeters. We'll multiply both sides by this and get our height of the image. So, um, so I'm multiplying both sides by 121.9 two centimeters. And this is where the room is getting a little tough here. Okay, you get the idea, hopefully. Um, let me move this up a little bit. So if we type that in, I should just keep that answer in there, but I'll... Technically, you're not supposed to round to the very end. Um, but I'll, I'm going to go ahead and round early what, times 121.92 just so all of our answers are the same. And, uh, I don't know. Um, I don't, I'm not sure how much of a difference it'll make. Is equal to about, um, looks like just under one centimeter, right? 0. 0.988 centimeters. Oops, wrong marker. Okay, so is that what we expected? An image that is almost a centimeter tall. <laughs> um, yeah, it is, right? Um, and, and, and you can think about this maybe if, if you've ever looked at a Christmas ornament from, from far away, from standing uh, two and a half meters away. So um, what's that, seven, uh, almost 10 feet away, standing 10 feet away as a, as a little kid and um, is your image in the Christmas ornament? Sure, but it's but it's your it's much smaller, right? So an image height of one centimeter uh, here makes sense, uh, positive because it's upright, and and that is what we would expect to see um, a smaller upright image, a virtual image, virtual because d sub i is negative for a convex um, mirror. Uh, something uh, like what we have here and, uh, and and right here with this case right here where you're standing pretty far away um, the image is, is, is smaller is virtual is uh, upright and um, yeah and that's what we expect to see inside of F uh, sure because I think our focal length was only four centimeters and the distance to this image was Two and a two point one four centimeters, so definitely inside of of uh, uh, the focal length of well, I guess just bare, well, just barely, right? Because inside the inside of F would be two point one six, not four point three two, two point one six. So two point one four is barely in, inside of two point one six, but it is. Um, so uh, yeah, so that's good. Uh, all right, so now we'll talk about, um, we'll switch to uh, refraction and uh, what happens to light when it passes through a medium um, instead of just reflecting. All right, hopefully this is making sense and hopefully the couple examples there helped uh, to see how um, the, the mirror equation works and then comparing it to our, our, our ray diagrams from last time to see um, how, how they both agree and, and make sense. All right, I'm going to pause it there and then I'll come back and talk about uh, refraction. All right, so uh, refraction is kind of um, another major part to this, um, to this chapter. And uh, refraction deals with light passing through a medium and, uh, and, and, and entering a different medium and in bending because of it. So instead of uh, instead of uh, saying bending all the time, we like to say refracting. So the light 
is, is bent when it um, enters a different medium and either speeds up or slows down because of it. Uh, the denser the medium, uh, it'll slow down more in a, in a denser medium. In a uh, less dense medium, a rarer medium, uh, it will speed up. So if you want to go ahead and write that down, you can. So it's uh, how light bends when it travels from uh, one medium to the next. Uh, the other thing I wanted to add there was that uh, when light refracts um, and it changes from one medium to the next, a lot of times a, a piece of it will still be reflected. Um, not all of it, although that does happen sometimes in, in total internal reflection, which I think we'll get to talk about. Um, but uh, but just normally a, a little bit of it will still reflect, but most of it will refract. All right. Um, so this happens when light travels at any angle other than straight on from one medium to another. Uh, straight on, um, there's, you know, it's not going to change because uh, it's already at the normal because the normal is 90 degrees to, uh, to, to both surfaces. And um, the incoming ray and the refracted ray are measured with respect to the normal just like they are with mirrors. Um, we are going to notice some interesting things happen when the surfaces are curved. Uh, for instance, a, a lens has a, a glass, a piece of glass that has a surface that's curved and therefore the normal is different. So when light bends um, in regards to a, uh, a changing normal, uh, we can create some different images. Um, I don't think we're going to get to talk about lenses, unfortunately, but um, that's okay. I'm going to give you like all the ideas that will kind of lead up to it. And the rules are actually very similar to mirrors um, with uh, converging and diverging lenses, but that's okay. Um, so uh, we'll, we'll save that for uh, another day, or um, if not, you can learn it on your own. All right. Uh, so let's, let's see a little bit more about refracting. So here is an example drawing. And here I have light uh, in air, right? Uh, a, a ray of light coming from the air uh, with an angle of incidence to the normal. Um, the normal is drawn through both the air and the water, which is the second medium or material um, that the light is going to pass through. So the light's going to have an angle of incidence. It's going to then enter air and, um, and have an angle of refraction, theta r, which is different than the angle of incidence because the light ray bended as it uh, as it changed mediums because when it went from air it was moving faster in a less dense medium to a more dense medium of water and and therefore uh, the light bent towards the normal or refracted uh, when it entered the water. So what I wrote here is uh, when light moves from one medium to another, part of it is reflected and part of it is refracted. Uh, if I was going to draw the reflected part, I would have a ray coming off this way, right? Theta I equals theta uh, reflected. Um, but but I, I didn't draw that because we're just talking about refraction, which is the bending of light as it as it passes into a new medium. Um, the what causes this is the velocity is different, but the frequency doesn't change. What changes is the wavelength. Um, we're not going to worry too much about that. But uh, theta I and theta R are uh, angle of incidence and angle of refraction, not reflection, refraction. All right. Let's go ahead and move to the next part. So how does light bend? Um, so we, we mentioned it was a change in speed. So the speed of light is 3 times 10 to the 8th uh, meters per second, or C. Uh, light travels the fastest um, in a vacuum than any other medium um, because there's nothing in the way. Uh, there's no um, molecules or anything to slow it down. A vacuum has uh, no uh, gas particles or gas molecules or atoms or anything in the way, so um, it, can, it can travel the fastest. Um, the speed of light in air, um, air obviously has uh, molecules or atoms. It has um, you know oxygen and uh, carbon dioxide and nitrogen. And, and so therefore, um, it's going to be slightly slower through air than a vacuum, but only slightly. So uh, we'll talk about that, um, what that means here um, in a second. Uh, but uh, water is definitely denser than air, so the speed of light is less in, uh, in, in water than air, 
and glass is even more dense than water, so the speed of light in glass is less than water and obviously less than air. Um, all right, so when light, and here's, here's the idea behind how light refracts, is that when um, light speeds up, it bends away from the normal, and when light slows down, it bends towards the normal. And, um, and that's super important to understand both of those. So when light speeds up, it bends away from the normal. Notice how it's all about the normal and slowing down, it bends towards the normal. Okay. So let's see an example of that. Um, this is an interesting example. Um, so when I, I remember when I was a kid, I used to walk along the dock uh, I'd go up north and go to this marina and I used to always go fishing because that was what I liked to do and uh, I didn't have anyone to take me fishing on a boat usually sometimes I had an uncle that would do that but uh, I um, would love I just loved to, to go to go try and catch fish and even though I didn't have a boat um, I'd go to the marina and the people that owned the marina would leave me alone uh, and, and, and let me fish there, and it, and it was fine. So um, anyways, when, um, so I'm going to try and draw this. Let's see if this works. Uh, I can already see it's going to be kind of a, a bad drawing example, but um, let me see if I can. Okay, I think, it, I think it'll work. We'll see. Uh, I really didn't give myself enough room because I was drawing this amazing dock and I didn't leave a lot of room for the actual physics example. All right, so uh, I guess uh, maybe I can, I can still squeeze it in. All right, so we're going to say that um, there's a person, right, who's standing at the edge of this dock and they're looking for... Um, uh, a fish in the water, right? And uh, so uh, if they see a fish in the water, because I don't know if you know that, but you you know, if you go to a marina, you, you can, you know, you can find different kinds of fish like bluegills or sunfish or um, maybe some carp or something swimming and in, in rolling around in the water. And, uh, it, and it's kind of neat. But uh, if you ever do this and then you, you try and catch the bluegills or whatever, or the sunfish that are... Um, that are in the marina, that uh, when you get them out of the water, they look different, right? And, and so this example kind of gets at that. So uh, what, what happens is if there's a fish in the water, try and draw a fish here, all right? And uh, if I can see the fish, right, then that means light has to hit the fish, right? Light from the sun has to hit the fish. And then the light has to reflect off the fish and hit my eye, right? And that's how I know the fish is there. So, um, so what's going to happen then is that the light is going to travel uh, from the fish, right? Let me see if I can. Well, this is going to be this is going to be tough. All right, I probably should have drew. Oh well. All right, so it's going to travel from the fish, and I tried to draw a straight line. Ah, this exam, this, this drawing is just terrible. All right, I ugh. let me try. Let me try one more. <laughs> uh, maybe I should just cut this out of the video. We'll see if it makes it in the final cut. All right, Doc. Ugh. The person on the dock. Oh yeah, that's much better. Um, water and the fish. Um, all right. It's actually a rather large fish <laughs> compared to the person. All right. Uh, so anyhow, this this um this light ray is going to come off the fish and it's going to 
go from water to air, right? So we have H2O here as our mediums. The normal is 90 degrees to both surfaces. All right, this would be my angle of incidence. And my angle of refraction, we have to know that, well, when light speeds up, right, it goes from this is more dense This is less dense, or as I like to call it uh, sometimes, rarer. Um, so it's less dense medium, and and so therefore uh, we know that the light is going to go faster when it's in air, and it's going to travel slower when it's in water. Okay, so when the light goes from slower to faster it bends or refracts away from the normal. So here would be the straight line, right? If it just traveled in a straight line, just like this. But what we're saying is it's gonna bend like that, right? It's gonna go from going in a straight line, right? It's gonna refract and bend like that. So I'm gonna draw that bent ray straight from the water, just like that. And, and you can see, hopefully, this angle, theta refracted, is larger, right? If I draw this maroon angle is larger than this green angle. Hopefully that that's obvious on the video. Now, your eyes aren't that smart, right? Um, and, and, and we talked about this before with mirrors, that your eyes don't know where the light rays come from. They just follow them back in a straight line. So what your eye does then is it follows this line back like that, right? And, and instead of seeing the fish where it is, it sees the fish here. And you might say, well, what, what difference does that make? Well, what happens is, if you've ever been fishing, that this fish appears larger when it's in the water, right? And a lot of times, um, and, and, and this is the image, right? A lot of times, uh, th there's a little bit of a disappointment, right, when you get the fish out of the water because you, you see it in the water and you're like, oh, man. And, and then uh, you catch the fish and it's like, oh, you know, it's, it's not quite usually the same. Um, but, uh, but this is why, right? And uh, this, this uh, because of this refracting of the light and the light um, going from a slower, denser medium to a less dense medium, um, this, is, uh, this is pretty important. So um, this change in the speed of, of the light ray when it, when it passes uh, mediums causes it to refract. All right, so um, what about, uh, let's think of another example, um, a dock example. Um, all right, so let's say maybe instead of a fish in the water, or well, let's, let's stick with it, we'll stick with it. Um, so I'm gonna try and draw this again. Okay, and this person is standing at the end of the dock, and there's water, of course, and um, now the fish sees the person, right? And um, and 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 the way that's gonna happen is uh, a light ray is going to um, come from the person this time, right? and hit the fish. So uh, I'll, I'll draw a light ray um, coming from the top of this person's head, hitting the water. And we know that at the water there is a normal. I haven't drawn the fish yet, but I'm, I'm gonna draw that in a second just because I think if I hold off on drawing it, uh, it'll be a better drawing. So you have this light ray traveling from the top of the person's head, and, and, and now this is the angle of incidence, right? So I'll use green here. And um, 
and then it's going to enter the water and the the normal can just go straight 90 degrees 90 degrees right straight through the both mediums and um, we're assuming this is a flat surface not curved like my drawing kind of indicates there this is just the water um, but but uh, but when it enters a um, a denser right medium right because this is so when the it's gonna slow down right so we know that the that that through air it's traveling fast and then in, in water it's gonna go slower so we saw uh, last time when it sped up it bent away from the normal now when it slows down it's gonna bend towards the normal right um, so the drawing actually looks uh, a little bit similar I guess in that respect but we have to remember who's viewing this and 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 what it's gonna do it's gonna travel like that right and maybe the fish is right here the giant fish uh, a muskie or something or sturgeon um, <laughs> And, uh, and, and the fish is going to see this person because the light ray comes off the person's head, travels into the water, and instead of going in a straight line, it refracts or bends towards the normal and creates this smaller angle right here. And I'll call it theta r for theta refracted. And in this light ray hits the fish in the eyes, so it knows the person is there. But the once again, um, the 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 way your vision works or a fish's vision works is that uh, it only um, knows straight lines for light rays, and it can't um, follow a bent ray. So what it does is it follows the straight ray up. If I can draw dotted line there or something right it follows that ray up and sees the person as being up here and so therefore the person is further away right and our yeah and, and so the person appears smaller right because this light ray this refracted ray it follows it up right and I can even maybe draw that in a different color right here because it follows this, this ray up, right, like this. Follows that right there. And sees the image of the person right here, right, further away. So um, it, it sees a smaller um, image. So uh, that's probably worth noting right there. Um, I kind of, I'll just write it right over here. And when can you, what, how does this make sense? Well, you think about if you've ever been swimming um, in an in-ground pool and, uh, and you look up and you can see somebody walking um, along the deck of the pool and, and they always look further away, right? Um, and, uh, and, and, and this is why, right? They're, they're more distant. When that uh, light that is coming off of the person bends, uh, towards the normal and slows down, um, you look up and you follow that light right back and they appear further away. Okay. So hopefully that kind of makes sense. Um, let's add on to this a little bit with something called the index of refraction. And what this is, is a ratio of the speed of light to um, the speed of light traveling through a different medium. Because we said that the the... Um, denser the medium, the slower the light travels. So, so we're, we're going to give uh, a variable uh, n, right, the index of refraction, the variable n, a lowercase n, that tells us how slow the light travels through um, that medium. And uh, the slower it travels, uh, the greater this value of n. So a value of n of 1 is um, light traveling through a vacuum. And as, as, as it travels through denser material, 
um, the n value is going to get larger. So we'll look at an equation for that. So um, it's dimensionless since it's a ratio of two velocities, right? Uh, meters per second divided by meters per second. Uh, always greater than one unless it's traveling through a vacuum, then it's just equal to one. And um, because light travels slower in a substance than a vacuum, a vacuum is just something with no uh, molecules or anything in the way um, or atoms or anything like that, like gas particles or gas molecules or atoms. Um, all right, uh, formula here is uh, the index of refraction, or n, is equal to the speed of light in a vacuum, which is 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. I guess I can write that right there. Over uh, the speed of light in the medium, which is always going to be less than 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. So we're going to get numbers larger than 1, because this is the larger number on top, divided by a smaller number on bottom, and we get... Uh, a, a ratio where the n value is larger than 1. So if you want to write that down, you can. All right. Obviously pause it if you need to. Okay, so uh, like I said a second ago, a larger n or index of refraction means um, that uh, the the light travels even slower in that substance. So different substances are going to have different n values because uh, if the light is traveling really slow, then this number is going to be a lot smaller and, it, and this number is going to be the same size. So if you divide by a, 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 a lot smaller number, you're going to get a larger n value. So larger n means the speed of light in that medium uh, is going to be traveling um, uh, much slower. So uh, slower light or the slower light travels in, in, in the substance uh, when um, the n is larger. So larger n, uh, the slower the light travels in the substance. And then the more, also the more a light ray will bend or refract um, when traveling from a vacuum into the material. So we're saying that, um, that in a substance that has a larger n value because it's, it's denser, uh, the light ray will refract or bend even more. Okay, so uh, here's some common n values. Uh, you can obviously look these up. It's a little bit like uh, coefficients of friction. You just got to kind of um, look them up to know them. Uh, but these are ones we we use quite quite often. Um, vacuum is obviously one, um, but air is only slightly, slightly, slightly you know, uh, denser than a vacuum. So uh, this n value is only slightly larger because it, it, it doesn't, uh, light doesn't slow down much in air, but it still slows down a little bit, right? Because this number is larger than one. Um, so for, for our calculations, we're just gonna uh, pretend that it's equal to one. We won't worry about this little bit here, but, um, but, it, but it is there and it's definitely slower through air than, than a vacuum. Uh, vacuum being something like outer space or something like that. Uh, water, um, even slower because it's denser. So 1.33 compared to the one, approximately one of air. Uh, glass, even slower still. Um, uh, it might depend on the type of glass, uh, but, um, but just in general, we like to use 1.52 for glass. All right. So how do we know then how much the light bends, right? How, how uh, we have this idea of an n value for the fact that light is going to slow down and, 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 and therefore refract, and it's going to refract more if it slows down more, but we don't have a, a way, to, way to determine how much, right? So we need a way to, to do that. And so this is where Snell's law comes in. Uh, it's a mathematical relationship to calculate the angle of refraction when light passes through two media. So we have the um, index of refraction of the first medium and the index of uh, times the angle of incidence, right? So uh, index of refraction uh, of the incident ray uh, times the um, sine of the angle of incidence. Um, this is still going to be in degrees. Uh, it equals uh, the index of refraction of the, um, the refracted medium 
so the, the second medium or, or where it goes into, and times the sine of the angle of refraction. Uh, if, you're, if, you're, if, if you like that way of writing it, it's fine. Another way I sometimes write it in class because I think I, think I might like it better sometimes and I, th I think students might, is just simply uh, n1 sine theta one equals n2 sine theta two where uh, one just means the first medium and two is the second medium because um, usually you know it's just drawn from incident to refracted and, it, and, it, and it's intuitive and makes sense. So uh, so this is this is how it works, right? Um, and uh, and we might take a look at a calculation for this. but before we do that, uh, I'd like to show you a demo of how this works. So um, I'm going to pause it there and set the demo up. All right, so I want to show you an example of Snell's law. And right now I have a light source, which you can't really see, but it's right here. And uh, I just have this guide over it to turn it into one um, beam of light that's smaller or a ray of light. Um, and anyways, if I shine this through a, a semicircle of glass, right? And I put it at zero degrees right here and, and shine it just along the normal, you can see that there's really not a lot of refraction meaning that light is going from uh, air to glass. But we're going to kind of ignore that right now here because I'm going to shine this at 90 degrees so we notice no refraction inside the glass, right? The light ray just continues in a straight line. And then it goes from glass to air again. And uh, once again, no refraction because, <clears throat> because uh, this is 90 degrees to the normal, right? So this light ray just goes straight through. All right, that's not very interesting. All right, so uh, anyways, what we're going to do is I'm going to shine this always at 90 degrees and bring it along um, f up this uh, th these, these angles. And um, what we're going to be focusing on isn't so much what's going on in the glass right here because this is always going to be 90 degrees because this is all, all of these lines are 90 degrees to the surface. All right, I tried to make it that way when I drew it. Um, let me see if I can line this piece of glass up again. It looks like it came off my uh, tracing a little bit. Okay, I think that looks a little bit better. All right, so anyways, um, yeah, so check that out, right? Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and go up to five degrees. And when I do that, what I'm going to try to do is always hit the normal at this edge right here. And you can see, because I'm doing that, right, that this is my angle of incidence, five degrees, and my angle of refraction is now larger. Check it out, right? What's that, about six or seven? All right, and this effect is gonna become even more extreme as we increase the angle of incidence. All right, so now it's at 10 degrees, and you can see now the angle of refraction is close to 14. All right, let's go up to 15. All right, and you can see at 15, it's now hitting at about what, 23? Okay, let's go up to 20. 20, it's now closer to 30 or 31. Um, let's go up to 25. Now closer to 37, 38. Let's go to 30, and, and at 30, we're almost at 50, so it looks like about 49. So you might say, well, something interesting is going to happen if we get all the way to 90, right? Like, uh, what will happen then? Um, so you can kind of see that coming. All right, uh, 35, close to 62, 63. Whoa, 40, got a little ahead of myself there. Um, 70, what, four, it looks like. You know, it's kind of hard to see. But you can kind of see what I'm talking about, right? We're gonna run out of room here and this light ray is gonna bend straight along 90 degrees. And, and I'm not even close to 90 yet, right? So I'm definitely gonna have that happen. It's gonna happen at a special angle we're gonna call the critical angle, where this light ray, instead of refracting out into the air, is gonna pass right along the medium. 
And so where is that critical angle? I think it's about right there, 44 maybe degrees, maybe 45, um, and, and you can't really see it. Um, what happens when you go past the critical angle? Well, when we go past the critical angle, right, there's the refraction taking place. When we go past it, what we get is, is that the light ray, instead of passing into the air, stays in the glass. And we get something called total internal reflection. So if I put it at 50 degrees, and I, I know it's kind of hard to see, what's going to happen is that this is now going to be my incident angle, and this is going to now be my reflected angle. So now the law of reflection takes hold, and angle of incidence, um, uh, or I should say, I, we always make our incident angle with respect to the normal. So this is my incident angle, and this is my reflected angle. So we can see that those are always going to be equal and we're going to have total internal reflection right there. Check it out. Let's see. A little hard to see, but you can see that this theta incident and theta reflected are always equal. Now, it's not perfect, so you notice maybe some light passing through because uh, the demo is not perfect, so I'm back under 44 when I get closer to 44, total internal, this is called total internal reflection. And so theta incident equals theta reflected. Theta incident equals theta reflected. This is what gives uh, diamonds um, their, their uh, sparkle. So when we see like a diamond captures the light, um, theta incident equals theta reflected. Uh, this is why, because of the total internal reflection that is going on. So it's, it's, it's interesting here that refraction, right, light bending as it passes from glass to air, which happens under 44 or 43 degrees, right? Check it out, right? Refraction, 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 refraction. All this is refraction, right? I'm trying to move this light ray. Refraction. Let's see, refraction. Let's look at the camera. Um, and once we get right here, right, there's no longer any refraction because it's now at the critical angle and now we see total internal reflection happening. I'm just trying to get this light ray just right so you can see it. Total internal reflection, total internal reflection, and so on. Um, I can show you this with the laser pointer. Uh, it doesn't uh, do quite as well because it's just the light is so intense um, that you get a, you get a lot of um, uh, extra stuff going on. And remember that even at the small angle where it's mainly refraction, right, happening, there's still some reflection. And uh, because some of the light is reflected and some of the light is refracted, right? And so we get uh, some of this... Um, it, it, it's never, it's never, it's, we get more of, we see more of this with the laser because it's so, it's so intense. Um, but you can see that refraction and that bending. And we said the critical angle was about, what, um, 44, okay, at 43, 42. Uh, check it out, right? And then it's starting to do that reflection right there, right? Total internal reflection, right? When we're, you might say, well, why is it going to the other side of the page? Because I'm missing the glass right there. <laughs> I'm lifting the laser up and that's what's causing it to miss the glass. So I, I apologize for that. I'm just trying to get it to be visual for you guys. So you can see right there, right? Way above the critical angle. Check it out. Light's not really getting through to refract. It's, it's just staying totally internally reflected, right? Totally internally reflected, totally. This is actually working really well with the laser pointer. I didn't think it would. All right, let's go a little bit. Of, we're at the critical angle. It's about to come into the air again. And there it is, right? Refraction. Check that out. Right about 40, 
five, 40, no, 40 degrees. Um, around there. We're now seeing it refracted out into the air. All right, very cool. So, um, and you might say, well, why is there a little bit of reflection going on right now, even though we're under the critical angle? Because I said, right, some of the light is still reflected, and, and but most of it is refracted at that point. Okay. All right, so why does this matter, right? Let's talk about an example. Obviously, it shows um, refraction, and we could calculate these angles with Snell's Law and see if it matches up. That would be pretty neat. But, but let's maybe see a practical example. So before we see that practical example, let's prove Snell's Law first. And so let's get um, an angle of incidence that's visual and an angle of refraction that's also visual. So I think if we maybe go for about 20 degrees, we can see the angle of incidence is, is clearly at 20 degrees, right? Let me see if you can see that. All right, I think you can. And the angle of refraction is about 29. Ooh, let's check it out. Maybe 30? Let's say 30. All right, let's, let's try that. So we're saying, if we, if we calculate this, that um, Snell's law says, uh, sign, it says uh, N1 or NI, right? Um, I'll use I, sine theta I is equal to uh, NR sine theta R. And we said that our, uh, our first medium is um, glass, right? Because it's, this is where the refraction hap it happens when it goes from glass back into the air. And our second medium is air. All right, um, N for uh, um, index of refraction for glass is about 1. Point, I think we said 1.52. Uh, the incident angle we just said a second ago was 20 degrees. Air is about one, right, uh, for our index of refraction. And um, theta refracted is, we'll say, 30 degrees, right? It could possibly say 29. Um, so here's what we have here, right? So 1.52 times sine of 20 equals 1, right, times the sine of 30. Um, so uh, let's see uh, what that is. Sine of 30 is, is half, right? That's been a while. Um, yeah, uh, ooh, that's not half. That's definitely in radians. <laughs> um, All right, let's get to degrees, exit. All right, let's try that again. Good thing I checked that. All right, so sine of 30 is definitely a half. And then sine of um, 1.52 times sine 20, I'll just write that down. One times a half is just 0 0.5 or a half. All right, um, 1.52 uh, times the sine of 20. Whoops. I don't know what I'm doing with these parentheses. Let me try that again. I don't think I need parentheses. All right, is 0.52. All right, that's pretty dang close, right? Um, and, and you might say a little, uh, you know, room for error because I did, you know, sketch all these angles in and I wasn't exact. You know, had we have said 29, right here instead would that have been closer to 0.52 i wonder uh sine of 29 degrees oh that would have went the other way <laughs> uh 0.48 but but so still a little bit of room for error but not bad right um and, and and maybe the glass uh glass has a couple different indexes of refraction but i think we use the right one here i think this is just experimental error but still that's that's not bad at all uh slight uh, uh, slight amount of um, error there, not not much, maybe a few percent. Um, so, uh, all right, um, let's so let's see that practical example. Okay, so for a more practical example of what we just talked about, which was that as light passed from a dense medium to a less dense medium of air, 
that it refracted or bent, and it bent, if this is the normal, right, the, the ray of light bent away from the normal until it was hit the critical angle and then it was total, totally internally reflected. So um, let's say that there is a, uh, a tree and uh, try and make this look more like a tree. And um, I'm not sure how much room to save here. Let's also say that this ground or this surface extends away from the tree in this direction. Like that. <clears throat> and uh, in that, I'm going to try and draw some straight lines. That it's like a nice warm summer day. I don't know if you can see that. Probably not because I couldn't, can't even see it. Oh, it's kind of dark. Um, and the reason this is important is, or what I'm drawing here, is a gradient of uh, of temperature. So what we're saying is, because it's a warm summer day, that the ground is hot. And uh, because uh, the light hits the ground, the ground heats up and becomes hotter than the air above it. So um, the uh, air up here is going to be cold, we'll say. And uh, so we'll say right here, maybe the air is warm. And then uh, right here, maybe uh, less warm. I don't know, I'm just making something up here. You get the idea, it's a cooler temperature right here. Maybe it's uh, cool, cooler, and then cold. All right, so um, what do we know about air when it's, when it's warmer? Um, we know that it's less dense, it's rarer. The, the molecules are moving faster, they don't stay as close together. And the opposite is true. Um, when the air is cold, it's more dense. So uh, why this matters is that uh, we can draw a light ray, say from the, the top of this tree, and have it change mediums, right? So maybe it's in the cold, dense air right here. And so I'll have this light ray come from um, right in this area. Maybe something like that. And it then changes to the cooler medium below it. And even though it's the same medium, right, it's air, it's, uh, it's different because uh, it's, it's, it's rarer, right? It's not as dense. So we said a second ago that when light moves from a medium that's more dense to a medium that's less dense, that it bends away from the normal, that it uh, refracts away from the normal. So uh, here is my angle of incidence, right? Right here. And so that is now gonna be, um, uh, well, yeah, it's going to be, uh, the angle of refraction is going to be larger, right? And, it, and that's quite, probably not quite large enough. Let me, uh, I think I can do a little bit better than that. That almost looked like a straight line. So we're saying something like this. 
and this angle of refraction is, is larger. Um, and then the same thing happens right here. So uh, it encounters another medium. So now it's encountering the cool air. And once again, um, this angle is now going to um, be even larger still. Struggling with this ruler. So here it is. We're going to go to maybe there. Let's try that. And so it refracted a little bit more. Um, I think this angle is larger than that angle. Uh, and, uh, and then what we can see is that if this pattern continues, this is going to be a little rough. something like this. And then finally, if it enters right here, and if this angle, right, I'm running out of room, this is going into my, my uh, definition of how warm the air is. If when it goes from uh, less warm into warm, right, right here, that if this angle right here, right, this is the angle of incidence, if it's, uh, if it's larger than the critical angle, then what we see is that this light ray instead totally internally reflects. Now you might say, well, why, why does this matter, right? And I, I'm not sure how well I drew that. Or maybe you can see where I'm going with this. Is that um, what happens here is if somebody's standing here and they see this light ray, that their eyes aren't smart enough to, to understand where it came from, right? And instead, they follow this light ray back like that. I'm not sure why this light ray is hitting this person in the stomach instead of hitting their eye. Jeez Louise. All right, uh, maybe I will just try and draw their eye. All right, that is a person's eye. I'm not sure how well that's showing up on camera. Okay, so, um, so what happens here is they their light their eye isn't smart right about where that light ray came from and when this light ray totally internally reflects and starts coming this way they follow it back and back to right here and they see an image right here of a tree and we know that this is a mirage um, And we see this on the road, maybe when we're driving, um, because the road heats up, and uh, and 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 uh, and we see an image of uh, of something in the road. Uh, maybe it looks like water, uh, possibly because this light ray, instead of coming from a tree, is coming from the blue sky. So blue light, uh, when it comes down, refracts and bends um, away from the normal, and uh, eventually. Uh, bends up, hits our eye, and we look and we follow that blue light back and uh, we see this image of, uh, of blue in the road and we're like, oh, it's water. And, um, and, and it's not, obviously. Um, and then you might say, well, why does, uh, well, it looks like water, it's shimmering um, like water does. Uh, well, the reason it's shimmering is because this air gradient, right, this temperature gradient is constantly changing. It doesn't uh, stay 
uh, uh, still, right? The air molecules are going to move. It's not clearly defined lines. And so this kind of shimmers and we're like, oh, water shimmers. So this must be uh, water and instead it's a mirage. Um, yeah, you can also end up with a superior mirage, which I believe is when the tree is reflected up this way. Uh, but that would be only if the uh, air temperature did the opposite and you had warmer air on a cooler surface. Um, so that also happens and that's pretty neat. And you can Google that and look up a superior mirage and, and see that. But uh, anyways, I just wanna show you an example of why uh, total internal reflection, which happens right here, uh, is interesting and in, in, in where it expresses itself. Next time you're driving and you see uh, a mirage on the road, you'll know why. It'll be like, ah, total internal reflection and that light ray is refracting and that road doesn't have water on it. All right, uh, so that's it. Um, hopefully uh, this is making some sense and, uh, and uh, that's it for uh, this week's lecture, the last lecture. And um, I, I appreciate if you've been doing all the work and you've been watching these and, and uh, hopefully you're enjoying them. All right, anyways, uh, get that assignment done and uh, for this week and then, uh, and then enjoy your summer. All right, take care.